Today's topic is hemorrhage or bleeding. Hemorrhage, also known as bleeding, is the loss of blood from the circulatory system or the escape of blood from the blood vessels in the surrounding tissue. Bleeding can be internally and externally or visible. In internal bleeding, blood leaks from blood vessels inside the body, such as the liver or spleen, while in external bleeding, blood leaks from blood vessels either through a natural opening, such as the mouth, ear, nose, vagina, or anus, or through a break in the skin. In internal bleeding, the patient may notice blood either in the urine or stools. Hemorrhage continues as long as the vessel remains open and the pressure in it exceeds the pressure out of it. Hemorrhage can occur from the artery, or arterial hemorrhage, capillary, or capillary hemorrhage, vein, or venous hemorrhage. A healthy person can endure a loss of 10 to 15% of the total blood volume without any serious medical difficulties. Excessive bleeding can be fatal and lead to several complications and can result in organ failure. The American College of Surgeons breaks hemorrhage down into four classes. Class 1 hemorrhage involves up to 15% of blood volume. In this type, there is no change in vital signs and there is always no need for fluid resuscitation. Class 2 hemorrhage involves 15-30% to 30 of total blood volume. At this stage, the body may start to look pale and be cool to touch. The patient may exhibit different changes in behavior. Blood transfusion may not be required. Class 3 hemorrhage involves loss of 30 to 40% of blood volume. At this stage, the patient's blood pressure drops, heart rate increases, and mental status gets worse. Fluid resuscitation and blood transfusion are usually necessary. Class 4 hemorrhage involves loss of blood volume greater than 40%. At this stage, the limit of the body's compensation is reached and aggressive resuscitation is required to prevent death. Hemorrhage can occur in any part or tissue in the body, and each one has its own specific name. In the upper head, bleeding may occur in the skull, or intracranial hemorrhage. In the subarachnoid space, subarachnoid hemorrhage. Within the brain tissue, or intracranial hemorrhage. In the nose, we have a nosebleed, also called epistaxis. In the mouth, there may be tooth eruption, or losing a tooth, vomiting fresh blood, hematemesis, and coughing up blood from the lungs, hemoptysis. There may be a pulmonary hemorrhage in the lung. In the urinary tract, there may be blood in the urine from urinary bleeding, also called hematuria. Bleeding in the anus can result from upper gastrointestinal bleeding, or melana, or lower gastrointestinal bleeding, hematochasia. Vaginal bleeding includes postpartum hemorrhage, breakthrough bleeding. In the gastrointestinal tract, there may be upper or lower gastrointestinal bleed. Ovarian bleeding may also occur. Causes. Hemorrhage can result from traumatic injury to a blood vessel, underlying medical condition, or both, including cancer, surgery, pile or hemorrhoids, liver disease, acute bronchitis, open wound, low platelet count, menstrual problems, hemophilia, hypovolemic shock, fracture, threatened miscarriages, peptic ulcer, animal bite, medications, and aneurysm, events such as car accidents, bullet wounds, falls, explosions, ectopic pregnancy, broken bones, heart attack, diabetes, chronic high blood pressure. Diagnosis. External bleeding can be diagnosed just by looking at the site of bleeding. Internal bleeding is commonly diagnosed by an imaging test. Treatment. Treatment may depend on the cause and severity of the bleeding. Thank you for watching our video. Please do not forget to like and share the video. Also, please subscribe to the channel to stay updated on our latest videos.